So I'm going to be talking about what I perceive and experience as the real key to developing effortless technique, which is unshakable under any circumstances. If you haven't met me yet, I am Jennifer Roy Franklee. I am the creator of The Art of Freedom for Conscious Living and Masterful Artistry. I'm also a professional violinist and coach for musicians, helping musicians of all kind, all kinds of musicians, um, professional, amateur, um, lots of professionals, because that's who I am, um, helping musicians to overcome pain, excess tension, stress, performance anxiety, and basically master their instruments, whatever it is, even voice and conductors. Okay, so we're going to dive into this topic of effortless technique and the power of your mind in just a moment. I would love to say hello to everybody here, and I'm really hoping that this video is working out. Technology can be really annoying sometimes. Um, if you're here, I would just love it if you would throw a comment out there and say hi. Tell me if you're on my Facebook page, if you're in my Facebook group, or if you're on YouTube. And I would love to have a little chat with you, um, just one-on-one -on -one and say hello. Let me know if I need to do anything about my sound, all that kind of stuff. So I want to hear from you before I go too deeply into this video. But if you're just coming on or you're watching the replay, I want you to know that this is going to be a really powerful video and you're in the right place if you are a musician of any kind and you want to learn about how to dramatically improve your skills without having to practice more with your instrument. So, ah, wonderful. Hello, Holly. I got a comment from Holly, who is a violin teacher in North Carolina. Welcome. Thank you so much for telling me you're here. Now I feel confident to continue with the video. Sometimes I do these videos and they're, the tech isn't working and that's just kind of a waste of, <laughs> of my breath, right? So thank you for commenting, Holly. And I would love to know who else is here and where you're watching from. That would be really great. So I'm going to dive in now. So the problem we're addressing here is technique instrumental, vocal technique, musical technique of any kind that may feel less than up to your high standards. And maybe you're having some difficulty with your technique. Maybe you have great technique, but then it falls apart on stage. Does that ever happen? It's really, really common if you feel like everything's going great in the practice room. It, you've been practicing well for days, weeks, months, years, and then you get into, you get on stage or in front of somebody who intimidates you, maybe it's an audition, and suddenly you are hit with some panicky negative thoughts and your preparation kind of goes out the window. Has anybody here ever felt like that? I know I have multiple times in my life. So if you can relate, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today because I want for myself and for you, above all, for all of us, to have a very clear system, uh, to have an understanding of how to develop a consistent, reliable technique that's easy, truly effortless. And you want to just be able to call on that, to know exactly what to think and what to do, to be able to elicit that powerful technique that you know is inside of you and you want to be able to present it to the world when you are on the spot and it's time to be on, <laughs> right? I think everybody wants that, right? Um, if you want that kind of a technique, would you just throw a yes or a why into the comments and then we can interact a little bit. I'm going to hop over here. Oh, hello, Judith. Judith is, Judith is a violist from Germany. Thank you so much for watching and telling me you're on Facebook. So glad my tech is working. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. And Holly, you can relate. you can relate to what I was just saying about inconsistent technique, right? So yes, you are not alone. This is something that's almost universal. Not universal because there are people who have that um, capacity to always be on. Not, nobody's always on, really. People have bad days, of course. But I, work with, I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of musicians over many years. 
Um, and it's just really, really common that you do all the work and then when the, <laughs> the moment of truth comes, things kind of fall apart a little bit. And maybe they're, and then you feel bad afterwards, right? You, you want to feel like you can rise to the challenge, that you can handle the stress. And it's really frustrating when you can't do what you want to do. Now, I'm not just talking about performances in this video, actually. I also want to talk about when you're in the practice room and maybe you're having a bad day and things just aren't working. I know you can all relate with that. You can all relate to that. You want to be able to kind of clear out the, the stress of the day. You want to know how to clear your mind, let go of the tension in your body so that you can bring your fresh self to every practice situation. You have to know exactly how to do that. And that's a skill that can be taught. I teach that. And it's something I do for myself whenever I go into the practice room. You got to know ex how to clear it all so that you can have a clear intention for your practice session. And then you can actually, you know, carry out the ideas that you have without all that interference that throws your technique off. You want it to be reliable in the practice room as well as on stage. The other thing that we're gonna to address today is when you're practicing really well, you're focused, things are going well, and yet you still can't do the things you wanna do. Let's say, and I'm sure you can all, you all have a piece or a technique or something that kind of is beyond you and you can't quite play it. I'm gonna just give you a very personal quick story, something that just happened to me over the last months. There is a piece that I want, I really wanted to put on my upcoming album. I'm putting together a solo album, my first one ever. I'm really excited. And I had it all taken care of, but it really needed this one extra piece, the Chrysler Recitativo and Scherzo Caprice, a piece I really love. And I wanted to put it on the album, but I couldn't play the octave passages on that third page. And so I practiced and I practiced and I practiced over the spring and I just couldn't get it. And I thought, ah, it doesn't matter. Who cares, really? I don't need to put that piece on the album. I'll just leave it off. The album's fine without it. So I gave up. And I, that was okay with me. I am at the point where I know I'm free to change my mind whenever I want. And nobody was waiting for that piece. It was just my own kind of thing. So over the months of the summer, I started to kind of regret that decision. And I thought, you know, that's like, that's a cop out. I want to be able to do this. I like that piece. It, it really belongs on this album. I'm going to give it one more shot. So I went back to it after a few months away. I still couldn't play it. And I'm like, okay, Jennifer, you've got to practice what you preach. You need to apply all the tools that you teach your students about working on technique in very specific ways that have everything to do with the mind and basically nothing to do or very little. I'd say 80% mind work and 20% out here on my instrument. So I got really serious with myself and did what I needed to do, which included quite a bit of what I call mind flow practicing. Most people call it mental practicing. That's really not a good word because it makes us think it's all up here when actually it's a holistic thing. Mental practicing absolutely includes the body, but it doesn't include it in the way most people think. It's not a good idea. And there are experts teaching this. It's not a good idea to actually be doing mental practicing up here while you're thinking about moving your, your body. Now, this video is not about that. I think I've done other videos on that and I can do more in the future, but so I'm not going to talk about mind flow practicing, but that's what I did for myself. And literally within a few practice sessions, I was totally amazed because I suddenly could play those octaves. <laughs> okay. And then I recorded the piece and I was really thrilled. Now, the last bit of this story is worth telling too. And I have, I have only told a couple people about this. This is really... I'm just burying it all. I'm exposing it all. Okay, so I finished the recording um, and I got the edits back and I listened. And this was just a few days ago. This was maybe a week ago now or less. I think it was last Sunday. So I got the edits and I listened to the edits and it sounded great. I was really excited. 
But then I listened to the octave section again, and I had to listen a few times and I realized, uh-oh, I threw in a couple extra notes. I know it sounds crazy, but I couldn't really tell. It's a chromatic scale. It's really fast with octaves that start up high and come down. And I realized that I had played the wrong notes. Most people would never know. I knew. Now here's the problem. I didn't want to put that out, to, out into the world like that with wrong notes, understandably, right? But I hadn't touched my violin in about a month, literally. So I thought, oh gosh, how am I going to record this and you know, do it now? This is the hardest thing. I still haven't been able to play it right. And how am I going to record this? But I said, all right, again, Jennifer, practice what you preach. So I said, I'm going to try recording it. I got out my violin. I turned on the I hit record. <laughs> I played it a few times, really paying attention to the way I specifically work in my mind. And I'm going to talk more specifically about this in this video. This video is going to be maybe 45 minutes or an hour. There's a lot I want to share with you. So I did again, I did it all up here and I let my body execute it. And I was blown away. And again, this happens, this has happened to me for years, but every time it happens, I'm blown away and I'm kind of shocked at what is possible when you practice here and you know what to do up here. There is, again, there are poor methods for mental practicing that sort of work, but not really. But there is a way to do mind flow practicing in a holistic way that's up here that is super powerful and efficient. So I did that and I kid you not, even though I hadn't touched my violin literally for a month, I did my work up here, had record on, and I played those octaves better than I had ever played them. They were the right notes at the right time and it sounded good. And that was at 1130 at night when I was exhausted and I really didn't think I'd be able to do it, but I thought I would try. Well, I whipped it off and easy. Okay, why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story for a few reasons. First of all, I want you to know that I practice what I preach. I do it myself. And I have spent years and years and years studying how to use the mind to manifest what you want out in reality, in your body, in your music making, in your life, okay? There are very specific skills and techniques that are incredibly simple, unbelievably simple, but very powerful in their simplicity. And when you dedicate yourself to consistent practicing this way, things like what I just told you become powerful, I mean, become possible and you won't even believe it because you're going to improve so fast. It's crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's, that's basically the main reason I wanted to share that with you to show you what's possible and to tell you, I do it myself. And this is what just happened to me. The recordings out. I have the masters. It's going to be on my album, which by the way, is coming out in time for the holidays. I hope in case you're interested. But even for now, you can hear other pieces I've recorded on streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. So if you want to hear kind of what I do as a result of this kind of working, it's already out there. So enjoy. All right. So here's what happens. By the way, I hope this was useful. Um, Nicholas is here. Hey, Nicholas says, love it. Sounds like you're referring to positive self-talk in all environments. Practice mode. Yes, positive self-talk is actually is a big part of it, but it's not the, it's not actually, um, the essence of it, which I will get to, but yes, absolutely. You need positive self-talk and you, even more importantly, you need to cut out the negative self-talk, but yes. And again, I'll talk about more of this in this video. So yes, totally. Um, Judith says desperately needed, gave an audition coming up and I'm in a blind Oh, you have an audition coming up and you're in a blind panic right now. I'm so glad you're here, Judith. Okay, I'm really glad you're here. Um, this video is gonna be really useful and I would direct you also to another video of mine. It's on YouTube, it's in my private, in my um, free Facebook group, um, but it's called 
relax everything in three minutes or less, or, or no, relax everything in less than three minutes. So Judith or anybody who has something coming up right now very soon and you're feeling stressed and anxious, after this video, go find that one and bookmark it and watch it and use it and practice it and try it. And I guarantee that you're gonna have a better experience. Okay, so just wanted to tell you that, Judith. Kathy, love you too. Hey, happy to see you here. I think you had a birthday. Hi, happy birthday. <laughs> okay, back to my topic. By the way, if you're just coming on or you're watching the replay later, or, um, you just started, I am sharing some very, very powerful material today on how, you know, really the key, the essence of what allows you to play with effortless technique. And it's all about using the power of your mind and, um, yeah, that's what we're talking about today. So I want to just paint another, you know, paint a little picture of the sequence of events that happens. Of course, there's more I can say about this, but this is basically what happens. And tell me if you can relate to this sequence of events. You start feeling stressed because something's not quite working the way you want when you're playing your instrument or you have an audition coming up or a performance coming up and you're, you're kind of feeling stressed. Usually there's a time element. I wanna make a note of that because that's not on my notes and it's important. <laughs> there's usually a time element here where you kind of feel pressed for time. Like you don't have the time that you feel like you need to be totally prepared. Okay, so this is common. There's a time crunch, time pressure. So you feel stressed, you feel pressured. So what do you do? You decide to try harder and work harder and make sure you do everything that you need to do, right? You get serious about it, yeah? And then what happens when you get serious about it? And maybe you, you wanna concentrate, work harder, focus more on it. So then what happens? You start to kind of hone in, you narrow a bit, you narrow your focus right? When you narrow your focus and your intention, that's a, a mental, emotional thing. But guess what? We are all one thing. You can't separate the mind, the body, the emotions and the spirit. Okay, one thing. So if you start thinking that way with the time pressure, and you're going to work hard and get serious and do what it takes, you start getting a little tighter, you get a little more compressed in your whole self, in your thinking, in your body, your emotions just get a little, you know, the stress elevates a little bit, okay? So then what do you do? If you're practicing and this is happening, maybe it's because you don't have a lot of time and you have stuff, music you have to get through in a certain amount of time, so you, you work hard and you're, you're concentrating and you wanna get through the repertoire and, and then you, it doesn't work, so, well, then maybe you stop, right? That would be a smart thing to do. Sometimes we push through it. That's not smart. Don't do that. <laughs> that leads down. That leads to pain down the road, guaranteed. If you push through um, as a, a regular thing. Okay, so it's kind of smart to stop. Like you might stop for a while and then try again. But you probably really haven't changed much in how you're responding to the time pressure and the stress. So you're basically coming back after you take a break and you're doing the same thing, right? So your progress is slower than you would like it to be, right? That's what happens. And you start to get a little frustrated. Maybe you, you maybe you got even a little more nervous because the time pressure is, is pushing on you a little more because you didn't really get done as much as you wanted to do. Sound familiar, right? So then what happens over time? You start to kind of feel bad about yourself because uh, your negative self-talk starts to invade your mind like well i don't know you start worrying about the performance and what might go wrong or you're in your practice session and you focus on the passages that you can't play so you try harder you work harder at them maybe you isolate them you do everything that you've been taught to do and you do it um but you start worrying that maybe you're not gonna be able to do it and then maybe you don't even want to think that, so you shove those thoughts out of your mind. And then does anybody do that? Shove them out of your mind and refocus. So you get even more intense and more serious about it as you're working, expending energy to shove negative thinking out of your mind. 
<laughs> that doesn't work either. It feels like it's working because, or maybe you're listening to affirmations and you're doing your positive self-talk. That's important. But again, that's not the key. Okay. So then what happens, right? Well, eventually you start to feel worse about yourself. Things aren't working and you just feel, you start to feel like it's never going to be good enough, right? Maybe then you start to have more performance anxiety. You start to worry about your future in music because your technique is never going to be up to your standards. It's never going to be good enough to win the audition. Self-critical thinking takes over. I call those the doubt monsters. I have a whole practice that I teach my coaching clients and my group program students. It's called the doubt monsters practice. And we, work, we go in depth with working on the negative self-talk and how to stop doing that and bring up what I like to call the angels of ease thoughts, which are going to take care of you and support you and make you relax. Okay, so that's that's one thing that is really, really helpful. But we're still in this scenario, okay? Your doubt monsters are taking over. You're being self-critical. You start to fear the audience and what might happen. Your mood plummets, you start to maybe feel depressed, you start eating more cake and chocolate. <laughs> I eat chocolate, dark chocolate. Um, and again, it's just not fun. Maybe you even don't let yourself go out with friends and have fun and, and relax because you're stressed about your upcoming performance or audition, right? So you kind of limit your life. Who can relate to this? Just give me a yes or type Y on your phone for yes if you can relate to any of this. So I can get some feedback here. And um, there's always a little delay, so I'm gonna come back and check in a moment. But if you're relating to any of this, please just share something in the comments and then other people can see that you're not alone, okay? It's good for you to expose it to the light and it's good for everybody else to see they're not alone. These things are so common that I'm talking about. Judith says yes, Bruno says yes, Cami says yes, Hella says yes. Okay, so, and Kay has a Y for yes. Hi, Kay. Great. These are universal. So mental issues, emotional issues, and guess what? Your body might start to feel a little sore and tired. Your neck might start hurting. Your back might start hurting. Your shoulders might, you might feel like there's too much tension in your shoulders. And over time, you start to get tired. Your endurance might kind of go down. Um, maybe you go get a massage. You make an appointment for the chiropractor. You go to physical therapy because maybe you had an injury, injury before and it's flaring up. So you can't separate your mind from your body, from your emotions and your spirit the body is going to reflect everything that I mentioned that's going on in your mind and your emotions. If you want to avoid pain, you have to take what I'm saying seriously. It's just the truth, there's no way around it. Almost all pain, maybe even all pain, originates in what I'm talking about. And if you want to overcome pain and prevent pain, again, you're going to have to pay attention to yourself as a whole and watch this sequence, this downward spiral of events. And you need to learn how to stop the downward spiral and take yourself into an upward spiral. Okay. Now, the big mistake that we all have that causes the downward spiral is exactly what I was just alluding to. We separate ourselves. We forget that we are a whole being. And there is actually no such thing as a mental issue. There's no such thing as a physical issue. And there's no such thing as an emotional issue. Okay. You cannot separate those things because they are intricately, intimately connected. So if you have a physical issue, now let's say you're trying to pick to play an octave passage and you can't play it. Do you tend to blame it on your fingers? Do you blame it on your hand? Do you say, I just can't get my fingers to do that thing? Is it because, oh, well, my posture, I have posture issues. My shoulders are too tight. I have a bad back. Do you blame 
your faulty technique on your body. This is a serious question for you to pause for a moment right now and ask yourself. Think of a situation, think of a technique that you can't play yet. A piece that you wish you could play and you just can't pull it off, like my Chrysler last spring. Do you have a passage or a technical skill that you just can't do? Maybe your spiccato just doesn't work or your vibrato isn't as flexible as you want it to be. Do you blame your body? I bet you do. Maybe unconsciously, but I bet you do. Because <laughs> we all do. It's human. We all do this. Something's not working out here. We think the problem is out here, right? It's just a misunderstanding because the problem is not in your body. It's in how you're thinking and how you're practicing. I guarantee it because when you change how you're thinking, when you change how you practice, and you stop blaming your body and you realize it all starts up here, your body just does what your brain tells it to. If you're taking notes, write that one down. <laughs> your body is innocent. You don't have a problem with your body, even if you've been injured, even if you have pain. The problem isn't in your body. Yes, of course, you have physical stuff in your body, maybe you have a rotator cuff issue or tendonitis. I've worked with hundreds of people with those. And I'm telling you, even if there is a physical issue in your body, it's never just a physical issue. And the origin of that issue probably was not in your body to begin with. Almost 100% guaranteed, okay? So do you blame your body? Put it into the, just be honest, put a yes or a no into the comments. Do you blame your body if you can't play those octaves? Like, oh, my stupid fingers won't do what they're supposed to do. Do you do that to yourself? <laughs> okay, the other, the other thing is that um, we try, where we, we really lack, um, we lack understanding. It's really just a misunderstanding, okay? So in my system, which I call the Art of Freedom Method for Conscious Living and Masterful Artistry, we address the whole thing. I address the whole thing with you when I'm working with you and put it into a holistic context. If you have a technical problem, you want effortless technique, but you just can't do it, right? If you're, um, if you're a reed instrument player, if you play the oboe or the bassoon, I have two coaching clients right now who play those instruments. And if you think you have a breath support issue, and you have to fix that. Or if you're a singer, I have singers in my program. If you feel like you have to organize your body in a certain way to get your technique to work, you're missing the big picture. I'm telling you, that's not the way to go about it. So in the Art of Freedom Method, we look at the whole thing with my five pillars. Five pillars of the Art of Freedom Method are purpose, Yes, you really do know what, you do have to know what you want. You have to have very clear intentions in a very general way. I have my coaching clients create a life mission statement, a purpose, a working living purpose that can change. It's not set in stone. You need to know why you're doing what you're doing. If you want to play, if you want to play The Last Rose of Summer, which is like one of the hardest pieces for violin ever written, you, I don't care about playing that myself, but if you want to play that, you have to have a reason why. You have to know why so that you actually do the work you need to do. So purpose is the first pillar. Then we have mind, body, spirit, and artistry. You take all those things together and you, you see it's all one hand, you can't separate those five things. You can't separate them, but you've got to look at all of those aspects in the context of the hand, in the context of the whole. And then you can apply that whole, your whole self, to whatever problem's coming up. So you apply your whole self to improving that technical passage you can't play. You apply your whole self to learning the last rose of summer or, or the twinkle twinkle variations if you're a beginner. You need to bring your whole self to it if you want your technique to become effortless. Now you can do it the old way. You can just work really hard and concentrate and focus and, and, and do all the stuff you usually do and you'll get results, you'll get better. But it's a huge waste of effort and time because you could be learning so much faster 
with so much ease. I told you earlier in this video that I didn't pick up my violin for literally a month and I'm not joking. I didn't touch it for a month and then I had to re-record that octave passage that I never could play and I had already recorded and realized I screwed up the notes. <laughs> I had to re-record it. It literally took me 20 minutes to whip off those octaves and they sounded better than ever because I was practicing my holistic practice all month long. I neglected to say that earlier. The key was I practiced what I'm sharing with you over the month. I didn't practice my violin, but I practiced this primary instrument, me, the organization of my mind, body, self. Okay, and again, this is very specific stuff you can do that I teach and then I practice. So you got the five pillars. Purpose, mind, body, spirit, artistry. These are the details of learning to play your instrument. Great, you obviously need to know how to pick up a violin or a flute and what to do with your fingers. That's granted, okay? So then in the Art of Freedom Method, we incorporate the universal principles of the Alexander Technique, which I am double certified in and I've been practicing since 2003. I was on the faculty of the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, teaching the Alexander Technique to musicians. And now I work exclusively online with musicians all over the world. I do private, like really high level private coaching programs. And then I also have an introductory program that I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about later on the, in the video. It's actually a brand new program if anybody's new here. Um, or if anybody you know knows me, it's a brand new program that has um, a self-study course and all kinds of stuff in it, but it's called the Musician's Mind-Body Breakthrough. I'm so excited about this new program. So I will tell you about that more, but I wanted to share with you that my work is based on the universal principles of the Alexander Technique, but specifically a very revolutionary, incredible, way of teaching the Alexander Technique for the modern times, but which goes back to the pure origins of the technique. It's, a, it's pure Alexander Technique. It's the real thing before Alexander started putting his hands on his students to teach them. It's a mind-body discipline. It's all about how you think, because what you think is what you get in your body and in your life. So I teach something called Primal Alexander, which is this revolutionary new hands-free approach, which I've chosen to do for the last six years because it works better. Just, I'm gonna put it out there bluntly. It is the best thing I've ever come across and I've gone to tons of international congresses, conferences, worked with some of the best Alexander teachers in the world. I was traditionally trained to use my hands and I don't do it anymore because this is so much better. It works faster. If you've had Alexander Technique um, work in the past, it's wonderful, the hands-on is great, but I know I'm gonna make enemies this way, but I'm just gonna say it because this is my true belief and my experience and the experience of many, you know, hundreds of other people now who have been learning Primal Alexander. It's, it's, the best. It's like the way to go. It works because it empowers the student to know exactly what to do with their own thinking to get exactly the results they want. So it's just great. I love it. I know I'm doing a commercial. I don't care. By the way, Primal Alexander was created by Mio Morales. This is not my invention, but I've been practicing and teaching it for the last six years. So it's just the best. So my Art of Freedom method incorporates Primal Alexander. And then I teach very, very specific things for how to address those doubt monsters we talked about before, and how to address mental and emotional blockages to making your, your body do what you want it to do in the moment of truth, when you're on stage, when you're in front of the critics. You know, How can you have the presence of mind and body to do exactly what you're intending without stuff getting in the way? This is what I teach. We do specific thing, things called awareness etudes. Every single day, for just a few minutes a day, you do these awareness etudes and your whole body, mind-body system, your organism starts to function better, your breathing gets better, your nervous system calms down, 
you are more present, more alert, more aware. Alexander talked about quickening the conscious mind. I really think you get smarter as you do this because your thinking just it gets faster and quicker and you can think on the spot and you have freedom of choice and you know it. So you're able to respond more quickly in the moment to whatever happens. Like if you're on stage and the person in the front row starts screaming or crying or is on oxygen and there's there's noise happening and it you don't let it distract you. You just you respond and, and you take care of yourself and you do what you intended to do. That's what you want, right? So other things that I teach are mind flow practicing, which I mentioned before. People call that mental practicing, but it's not. It's mind body mind flow practicing, but starts up here. And the result is you, you get out of your own way. Okay. So you need to have a system. This, these are natural abilities that we all have. Okay. I'm not teaching something that, I mean, nobody can teach you how to do something that you, you don't already have the capacity for. But what I'm teaching is going to the essence of how the mind and body work together. Something that, you know, toddlers, they have an idea and they go for it. <laughs> they have an idea and they express it. They don't second guess themselves. They don't censor themselves. They just do what they want to do. And they've got tons of energy. They are curious. They're lively. We want to actually learn how to consciously return to that kind of curious awake, lively, energetic state and be like little children that have fun doing what we do. So the solution really to developing an effortless technique requires that you bring a focused, organized mind to your practice sessions so that you really know exactly what to work on to get the results that you want. You have to have really smart, efficient practice skills that take your whole mind and body and emotions into account. You can't, you can't exclude any part of you. It's always going to be there under the rug. And if you don't acknowledge the stuff under the rug, it's just going to sabotage your performance. It's going to make everything harder. The reason is that if you have thoughts and worries and fears, um, stress responses, that cause your system to work harder, try harder, um, go into startle, try to control the situation. You're like I said earlier today, your system gets tighter, it gets compressed. And that's literal, your muscles start to shorten, which means that for instance, the muscles in your fingers, and your hands are slightly shorter. And the space in between your joints, is slightly compressed. So just think for a moment. If the space in your hand is slightly compressed and the joints are slightly compressed, is that going to make it easier to play fast, move your fingers fast or harder? That's like a no brainer, right? If your hand is kind of compressed and your arm is kind of compressed, everything, and you know, it may not even be noticeable. It can be on a subtle level. But even the subtle compression that's happening is going to interfere with your technique and it's going to interfere with the consistency of your technique. Because if you practice without paying attention to your mind body easing, if you practice with excess tension levels and it fluctuates a lot from one day to the next, you're going to have less consistency in the practice room. You're going to have more days where, oh, it's all working. I don't know why, but I'm having a good day. And then the next day, oh, everything worked so great today. Yesterday, why is everything so hard today? Can you relate to that? Yeah, we all can. So you go into the practice room to, to create and one day it's just not working. Why? You have no idea why. Well, I'm telling you why. It's because you're not sensitive to the excess tension in your overall system, in your physical body, in your emotional body, in your psychological, mental body, in your, in your mind, basically. It starts here. This is what creates that excess tension in the body because remember, 
your body just reflects what's in your mind. Your body is innocent. Your body just tells what your brain tells it. Your body just does what your brain is telling it to do. But it's unconscious. So you need to have a system. Well, first of all, you have to recognize that. But then you have to have a system that teaches you how to observe yourself objectively, as objectively as possible. Okay. You have to have a system to become more sensitive to how you're interfering with the easing, the natural design of your body, which is naturally open, free, and responsive. You need to have a system to, you know, just recognize when you're interfering, when you're getting off. Then you have to know how to get out of the way and undo all that excess thinking stuff that's causing the tension in your body. You have to know how to do that. And then guess what? You got to practice that. That's what I call practicing your primary instrument. This is what you need to be practicing all day long, throughout the day, whenever you remember. You can't sustain it, but you need to remember to do this throughout the day. If you practice working on your primary instrument, you're improving your coordination. You are relaxing your body. You're relaxing your mind. You're calming your nervous system. You're allowing your energy to flow. You're allowing your creative juices to flow. When you're not stressed and in a startle mode, you can think better. You can make better plans. You can organize your practice, your practice sessions intelligently. You can save time save tons of time and have time left over to enjoy life, even if you have a performance or an audition coming up this weekend. You can take time off. You can go for a walk and relax and not be worried about what's going to happen because you're practicing your primary instrument right now. And it's always about right now. Okay. So this is a very, very, very simple, sequential, clear process that I use for myself. I wouldn't be so passionate about it if I didn't know from the inside, from the inside out that it works from my own personal experience over many, many years. But I've also seen it in hundreds of musicians that I teach this material to. All these things start to happen. You start to feel better about yourself. You start to feel more relaxed in your body. Your pain starts to dissolve. Your healing mechanisms, your natural internal healing mechanisms are stimulated. The healing energy is allowed to flow when you get out of the way and you stop compressing your system. Things can flow and heal naturally. So you don't have to depend on beta blockers if you don't want to. You don't have to depend on drugs or alcohol, right? A lot of musicians are taking drugs and alcohol to get through a performance or an audition. I think it's like 90 some percent of musicians take beta blockers for auditions. I mean, if really, do we really want to be that dependent on drugs? You can avoid surgeries. Okay. There is a place for doctors and surgery and thank God for doctors and surgery. And if you do have pain, I strongly recommend you get a medical diagnosis. I do not do diagnoses. You need to go to a doctor and find out the actual physical manifestations of what's going on. And there are times when you really do need a surgery. By all means, I bless your surgery. May it go well. But I've also seen so many surgeries prevented from people taking the full responsibility for their own well-being in this way and realizing that actually they have so much more. You have so much more power over your physical experience in, you know, if you have pain or discomfort in your body, you have control over that. There are things you can do about that naturally with the power of your mind. And this video is all about technique. You have the capacity to create what you want up here so that your fingers, your arms, your hands, your breath will do what you want them to do when you want them to do it. You can do that. <laughs> you can do that, but it's a skill and you need to learn how to do it. So if you're curious and you want to learn how to do that, obviously I've been telling you all along that I teach this. I do this for myself and my students. So I want to invite you to learn more. 
all you need to do is reach out to me and ask me, tell me what's going on for you. Tell me what you want. Ask me about what's possible and we'll discuss what might be possible for you. I have a high level coaching program for people who really want to go kind of dive in, dive in and really do it right. And, you know, take a, take some months and go into that private coaching program with me. It's very, very powerful. The students who do that program get amazing results quickly. I just had a student start uh, about a month ago and she kind of was just on her own doing the self-study course. It's a three week self-study course that everybody starts with. And within a week, she was already telling me, she hadn't even had any personal contact with me yet. And she was already telling me about these incredible things that were happening, that her performance was more relaxed already, that she was feeling really so much more optimistic about her future in music and her self-esteem was going up and just all kinds of stuff was happening and other people were noticing it after like one week. It's really incredible and this is not unusual. So there's the coaching program, which is always available um, if I have room in my studio. Right now I do actually have a couple spots in case you're interesting and you want to grab one of those. Just contact me. And then I also have this new program that I mentioned earlier that I'm just going to tell you about really briefly right now. Um, it's called the Musician's Mind Body Breakthrough. It is a five-week program. It's about how to relax your mind, heal your body, and make great music. And you will learn some of the techniques that I have alluded to today. And you will absolutely know how to work on these things by the end of just five weeks. So the program includes a private coaching session with me where we go, you know, really targeted, you get personalized guidance from me that's based on your exact personal situation, whether you're overcoming an injury, maybe you have some pain issues, um, or maybe you just really are you know, ready to break through your technical limitations and you want to make better music. So we will hone what you need in your private coaching session. And then there's that three-week breakthrough self-study course, very powerful information based on the principles of the Alexander Technique and my Art of Freedom Method. And then there are optional live group sessions. There are people who really, really, really benefit from the group experience. And I understand there are also people who are not so interested in a group experience. So it's there for the people that want it. It's optional. Um, I'm going to have live Q&A sessions so that you can meet with me personally live <laughs> on Zoom. And, and we'll touch base and see how you're doing. So I'm guiding you. And then there's also a, a Facebook group just for my clients where you can ask anything, anytime during the program. So it's a really, really powerful, fantastic program. And I've put a lot of love and passion into developing this program over years and it keeps getting better. I've changed the name because it's like the best version yet. <laughs> so I want you to have that if you're curious, um, reach out to me, message me, or email me at jennifer at artoffreedom.me. That's jennifer at artoffreedom.me, me. And just ask me about my, whatever you're interested in, okay? And then I'm very good at responding. If you don't hear from me, there's a problem, like with the text. So maybe check how you spelled your the email address. That just happened to somebody recently. I want to hear from you. So write to me and if you know you want this program and it sounds like exactly what you've been looking for your whole life, and I promise it is, but even if you don't know it, <laughs> people sometimes wait years to finally take one of my programs and then when they're in it, they're like, oh my God, why did I wait so long? <laughs> because they're learning such important stuff and things are improving dramatically really quickly. So if you know you want this, mention this video for 10% off of the whole program, okay? And the registration for this program ends November 6th, so that discount expires November 6th, but I strongly urge you to reach out soon because space is limited and also there's a really special early bird bonus because you get a free self-study course 
um, that is all about musicians' mindset. It's a very powerful thing. It's the mindset, musicians' mindset power toolkit. I want you to have that. So if you want to sign up soon, reach out today. You know, as soon as you see this video, if you're watching the replay, ask for your 10% discount for watching the video and ask me for the toolkit. You just have to reach out before October 30, 31st, before October 31st to get the free mindset um, self-study course. And then there are other bonuses um, for people who register for this session. The session starts, um, when does it start? November 13th. And it goes for five weeks. So November 13th through December 17th. And then we have two bonus weeks also in January where you get to be a part of my advanced group for two weeks. And that is a really, really, really special. We have an amazing group of musicians from all over the world who are really interested in developing a holistic way to bring the whole self to their music making and improve in mind, body, and spirit and in, in music making in life. So reach out, let me know. And before I leave, I'm just going to hop over to the comments and see if there's anything I've missed. I'm going to make my mouse work again. Um, if there's anything... Oh, great. Stephanie's here. Stephanie says, when your whole self has a long, close history with trauma and tension... Oh, I think this is a question. Um, I'm going to assume that your question, Stephanie, because I'm not quite clear from what you wrote, but I think your question is, what happens when your whole self has a long history of trauma and tension? Then you need to be very, very kind to yourself and very patient with yourself. These skills that I'm teaching work. They work for everybody unless there is like a brain injury or like there's a disconnect. Um, and I've never come across somebody like that because they probably wouldn't be watching this video in any case. But this method of, of approaching what you're doing with your whole self, it really helps to overcome trauma and to release tension. There are other programs that can really help with trauma responses, but any program that works is going to be tapping into that natural design that I was talking about and calming the nervous system. You really, really need to pay special attention to calm, doing the things that calm your nervous system if you have a history of, of trauma. And working with the Doubt Monsters material, that process is very, very helpful when it's put into you know, the specific steps that I teach. Um, affirmations are part of that, um, but they need to be connected to something called constructive thinking which allows your whole system to let go instantaneously and it allows that easing to start showing up. It has everything to do with noticing what you're experiencing and then choosing the experience that you want to have more of. If you want to have more ease and comfort and safety in your life, then that's what you need to be noticing and focusing your attention on. I hope that answers your question, Stephanie. Um, you can ask me later if you have more you wanted to ask about that or if I got it wrong. <laughs> um, Katrina says, thank you. You're welcome, Katrina. I'm so glad. She says, this is all so good. Great. Okay, great. So if you're watching the replay, please respond in the comments, you know, comment on the video as you're watching. And I always go to the comments later, even much later, even if you're watching like weeks or months later, feel free to tag me if you're on Facebook and then I'll be sure to see your comments and I'll respond and interact with you. If you have any questions, throw them out there um, and I will answer them. Um, you can private message me through Facebook Messenger anytime. You can also email me at jennifer at artoffreedom.me about anything. I would love to get your feedback on this video and the content. Tell me what stood out for you. If you, if there was something that spoke to you, put it in the comments so that other people can read it and benefit from that little nugget that you found. And if you're not in my free Facebook group yet, please come over and join us. It's called The Musician's Advantage with Jennifer Roy Francoli. There's a ton of valuable information in there. And make sure that you get my free checklist and starter, gu starter guide. It's called Seven Keys to Make Your Music Great. If you go into my Facebook group, you'll see the link to get that delivered to your email, and then you'll be on my email newsletter list. 
And there's just a ton of content that I love to share with everybody. But truly, the best thing you could possibly do for yourself is to sign up for the Musician's Mind Body Breakthrough. It is life changing. And everybody that goes through this process just, I mean, there's even a 100% money back guarantee because it works. I can offer that easily. You do the work. If you don't get value, you get your money back. And nobody's ever asked for that because it always works. If you do the work, it'll work. So thank you so much for being here. Kathy says, thank you. And thanks to the universe for pointing this wonderful video out to me today. I'll be in touch. Oh, so happy to hear from you, Kathy. Thank you so much for commenting and for being here. Thank you everybody for being here. Please share this video. It's on YouTube if you wanna share the YouTube link. Um, if you found it useful, there are many, many people that you probably know that would also find it useful. So share away. The more people know about this, the better. Thank you. Love you all and be well. Bye-bye.